event. And she, um, she loved my photographs. So she asked if I could um, shoot some weddings with her. And so that was just sort of, um, I got to shoot weddings in a sort of a way that uh, I captured the little moments here and there and I uh, got to get all the nice background sort of those those capture those beautiful little moments uh, but you know weddings were so tedious and um, definitely was a little bit rough and I was trying to figure out because I always really loved sort of creating art but I, I finally figured out, okay, there's fine art and then there's other kinds of like more standard, um, you know, things that you can do with it. So um, while I was shooting weddings, um, my earliest muse was my niece, Maya. And um, she was eight at the time. And she and I would just sort of create these sort of dark, uh, fun scenes and and she was just I mean you can see her eyes I mean she's just soulful soulful little girl and um this is um Gray of Grays of Westminster he owns this camera shop in London and he also has a magazine um called Nikon Owner Magazine and he made it to LA and I happened to see him and um he asked to see just some of the stuff that I was shooting and um so I showed him some of the work with Maya my niece here um to, I didn't know this was going to happen but he basically um he asked me yeah just send send a few images to me email me and um you know ask a few questions just about what I like to do and I had absolutely no idea but he put this photograph on the cover and sent me <laughs> this magazine and it had a little note on the front that said like surprise you made the cover and I I was uh, beside myself because I mean it, it's one of those things where I guess right, right place, right time. But um, I, it was just really, really an extraordinary moment for me because it kind of the things I was doing between shooting weddings and making my own sort of art and creating with my niece. Uh, that was where my passion was, and to see that somebody believed in it, somebody um, liked it enough to put it on the cover of a magazine was just gave me this wind of like okay I can I can possibly do this um I ended up shooting um a second cover with my niece Maya um so after that point I started building up a sort of uh maybe I can do this uh you know good feeling about it that um people were accepting it as art and I submitted to Emerging Focus at Photo LA and um, and I got this work in. Um, so this is a photograph of my husband and it was really just late one night, I think it was 11.30. Uh, we just decided to just sort of try something. I was like, let me get the drop lights, let me get the thing, you know? And um, that's something that, um, I tend to do, um, I am primarily self-taught. So it's all by feel and emotion. Um, that's what really drives my work. Um, so basically I got into um, this and this was my first taste of like, okay, everything sort of builds on, maybe I can do this, maybe I can do this. Um, and I, I, uh, got um I was the image winner for the uh, black and white magazine for portrait children uh and that was in 2010 
So all these things were sort of just building my momentum um, within the art world. Um, so I always really loved just creating these portraits. Um, here is my father. And uh, we just sort of, again, um, using some drop lights and a friend of my brother's. Uh, this is all just really experimentation, which I'm very, very big on experimentation. Um, that's kind of all I ever do. And if uh, something, I don't know, I try to push myself to just try new things and see where it takes me. Um, this is my um, husband's uncle. Um, and he's actually an, an actor in like scary movies. He does like... Uh, all the makeup and these he's played zombies and a bunch of things um here's something um that i really pushed myself um on this is a friend that i actually played dodgeball with and um he was a dancer and one day i was just driving in my car and i was at a stop sign and i distinctly remember thinking it would be amazing if he just was holding his own head and so I had a friend of mine make a mold of his head and um we just created this whole piece um and I just thought it would be very interesting as if it was sculptural and creating that again um here is another one of my dad my dad um also an artist amazing artist just willing to always try anything um so at this point i was sort of getting into collaborations with other artists which i think is a pretty incredible thing to do because it can take you in sort of different directions that you know you can expand on um i worked with this uh, woman chelsea who made these masks and uh Again, I just, I don't know, I like the sort of um, dark feel. This is my husband. And yeah, she she's a really incredible artist. She's also a poet. So this was sort of early on and experimenting. So a lot of what I do is I take um, family and friends. Uh, I'm not opposed to using models, but um, I do find that there's something with people who aren't typically modeling. Um, it opens up some sort of world that's so beautiful and so interesting in them. And let's go. So at one point, um, it, it became clear I, I was working with uh, Aline Smithson a little bit. And, um, you know, people were working in series. I like to just create the work that I make, but I was like, OK, I'm game. Let's let's start to create in a series. So. Um, Again, just sort of pushing myself to try new things. If if something popped into my head, I wanted to try it. So I had this reflection series. And I wanted to take women who, just ordinary women, and um, to me, I don't know, this is sort of the internal dialogue with the reflections. And I love that you never knew exactly what kind of reflection you were going to get. But to me, the reflections really say a lot. And by the way, if anyone has any questions or you wanna pop in with anything, feel free.
So we shot these actually late at night in our pool and it was very, very, very cold. And uh, these ladies were absolute troopers. Again, I just wanted to try new things. And uh, I just like these little moments. So while I was doing the um, working with water, I started the sub subsurface series. And this one actually got into some shows. And I started doing more gallery shows, I think, at this point. And these were all new for me. I hadn't really shot underwater before. So it was all experimentation, especially with lighting, having to figure that out. Um, again, I really like how statuesque and um, strong she looks. Uh, I've always been very much inspired by painters, especially Caravaggio and I, I just always felt like I was from another time. Uh, so some of the works that I was just really enamored by I just feel very moved when I look at the work. And then Chagall, absolutely loved. Mark Chagall is so the whimsy colors. I love it. Also culturally very connected. Uh, okay, so at this point, um, I heard that they were having an open call for this group of photographers called Verge. And uh, I was nervous, but at that point, I just wanted to go for it and try. And I made it into the group. And that was really life changing. Um, these people were so supportive. Uh, and I just think finding your group of people and being able to ask questions and be challenged together and um, it's all so helpful and amazing. Um, I just love these people. So we had some shows and the hard part about being in Verge is that there were a lot of shows and you had to make a lot of work. So for me, it was actually a really good challenge to push myself even more on having to create, create, create a lot. Frequent shows, new work. One of the shows we did, the lights actually went out. And so people were looking at the work in the dark with their um, phones, which was actually kind of cool. In 2014, this group, Verge, went to Paris. Now, I do not like to fly and... Um, that fear was something that um, I just I hadn't flown at that point in so many years. And I just decided to send my work. But the thing was that I kept getting these beautiful pictures and I was so like, why didn't they go? Oh, no. So the friends were having the best time. They had champagne and they were at these parties and it was amazing. And um, he was sending me my work. And um, I was creating here. So Dramatis Personae is my 
current series. I've actually been working on it for quite a bit. Um, I, I don't know. They're very painterly. I like to get the lighting just right. It, you know, uh, it's usually just my husband and I, um, and then maybe if I'm having somebody else um, doing behind the scenes or if we have animals, which I'll get into in just a second. To me, the details are so, so, so important. They, they're they everything. So it's like to get the fingers right, to get the clothes right, to get the props right. Every detail. This bowl was my grandma's bowl. And um, just getting the colors, like every little piece has to work well together. Um, these twins were my friend's daughters. Again, never modeled before. And you can see here, this is a live snake. And on this tray, I don't know if you guys can see, can you see the tray? We had Madagascar hissing cockroaches right here on the tray. And they were in fact roaming around. We lost one at one point, and that was a little bit of a moment till we found it again. There they are. There's one right there. Um, I really just like emotion, work, expression. Um, I always think whether somebody likes my work or not, I want them to have an opinion about it. Hopefully they'll feel something. This one, when I put it in shows, I swear 50% of the people walk up to me and say, it's a man. I know it's a man. I know it's a man. And then 50% <laughs> say, no, it's a woman. So again, um, hands, fingers. Scorpion. I like people, uh, for people to be able to interpret the work for themselves. Uh, this is actually a live baboon. We shot this in my living room. We had animal handlers there. Uh, this baboon is named Chrissy. This is my friend Soledad. And um, again, she had never done anything like this ever. And she, what I love is when you have people that aren't typically models, um, I love the beforehand where they're like, oh, I've never done this before. I don't want to mess it up for you. And I'm like, hey, we're just going to play. We're just going to see, like, have fun, see where this takes us, what we can create. And it's really just a very light sort of thing. but. Um, once the outfits go on people there is just i can't even explain it there's just such a, a transformation that you see my cat <laughs> so again i think using the people and the, the things around you that you know are also most familiar with too can be really great. This is my uh, niece who came from Israel at the time. And uh, it was just, again, late one night we created this. And here, this is, um, again, the baboon was a live baboon, animal handlers there. Um, this model, his name is Gershom, and he is actually a, an artist, and he made this painting. It's his original artwork, and um, he's Dutch. And so we put Chrissy here with him. And she just sort of grabbed the paintbrush and it was such a moment. And I live for these moments because you can only, 
I guess when you work with models and animals, you can only anticipate so much. But I love just capturing those little things that can happen that aren't really, um, you can't really anticipate happening. This is a zonkey, a zebra donkey. Again, we shot this in our living room. Uh, if any of you, I don't think I can play the behind the scenes video here, but um, if any if any of you want to see it later, I can send it to you. Um, you can actually see the zonkey walking, I think, in through our house. And uh, it's not like a giant house or anything, but work with what you've got. This is my friend Emmanuel. Again, never modeled before, but oh, so just oh, the emotions. It just this moves me. He moves me. His emotions, his face, his oh, I love it. These are my friend's daughters. Yeah, I don't think I can share this, so I'll just move on to Paris 2015. So after missing the opportunity of going to Paris in 2014, I just thought, okay, I have to get over this fear of flying because this isn't this isn't how I want my life to be. Um, so I actually decided to do it. And I confronted it and I flew there and it was the most amazing, amazing, amazing experience. And I only share this because um, getting over your fears and pushing yourself is life changing, you know? So I don't know, I hope to give somebody else hope if they have, you know, they need a little nudge to get past something or try something. Uh, completely worth it. This was my wall in Paris. And I think I sold like four pieces on the opening night, which blew me away. Um, and it was just the most extraordinary experience of my life, uh, being in Paris, selling work, getting to talk to people, which is probably my favorite thing. It shows just face to face, um, getting to dis discuss the work. Um, I actually, um, this was really cool. I think I met with Catherine Edelman in Paris. I think she and her assistant Julie were there, um, at this show. And I ended up doing a solo show at the Edelman Gallery in Chicago. And that was crazy because <clears throat> I had had a solo show in Los Angeles um, with the furniture, a lot of the pieces that I used in the work, I wanted them to be in the show. And um, I also, on opening night, I had some of the models walking around as well and told them, don't, don't talk to anyone, just float around. So they were just sort of there hanging out, reading books, doing things. And um, I just felt like that would be a cool thing as far as the experience went. But when it came to Chicago, we had to ship like a truckload of furniture and it was crazy. Um, it was, my husband stayed up the entire night um, doing like the wallpaper, like he didn't sleep at all. And I had, I think, I, I think my son was eight months old at that time, maybe. Uh, this is the show in Los Angeles. This is another art fair and Chuck Close happened to be there, which was super cool. And he talked to the gallery owner about my work. And um, I guess just momentum started picking up. I started making a lot of work. Um, I had this show, East Coast. Um, and then um, oh, a lot of stuff kind of changed in my life. Um, here I was pregnant 
this was actually probably the day before I gave birth, I think. <laughs> because, you know, we meant to do the shoot earlier, but, um, ah, but basically while I was pregnant with my son, um, my father was dying and, um, so my father died when my son was a few months old and, um, my father was actually my greatest artistic inspiration I mean, he taught himself how to play the accordion. He would sculpt things out of clay. He loved using pastels. I mean, he he was just the ultimate creative human being. And my father found beauty in every little thing. He would just tell me, you know, I never get bored. I never get bored. He would look out windows and, you know, when we were on vacations, he would look out windows of the apartment building and say, people live there. People live there. And he would just wonder about people's lives. And I think being around someone that admired beauty, he admired the simple things, he admired the everyday things, um, and he saw them all as art, was such an incredible, incredible gift. So um, for the co collaborations I've done, um, I worked with this amazing artist, Malka Nedivi, and we created this piece. Um, her parents were Holocaust survivors, and um, our family sort of came through a lot of um, similar history. And so we made this piece together for a show. And then I met Twinka Tebow, such an extraordinary human being, uh, amazing woman. Um, I don't know if you guys know Twinka, but she has um, modeled for um, a lot of different artists from painters to sculptors to photographers um, her whole life. And um, yeah, her father, a painter so um we basically decided to collaborate on a couple pieces again brought in snake and i had no idea at the time but she had never worked with snakes before she was a complete professional amazing um but we shot these two pieces and um she wanted them to be included in her show. She was given a retrospective and um, it was called Twinka Tebow and the Art of the Pose. That was at the Crocker Art Museum in Sacramento. And I was just so honored to be a part of that. It's a really, really beautiful show. Uh, and then uh, they asked if I would fly back out there and be on an artist panel. And that was just <clears throat> the biggest honor. So I was uh, on this panel with Twinka, with Judy Dater, and um, we just got to speak in, a, in an intimate setting about the work, about art. It was absolutely wonderful. Really, really beautiful. Uh, in conclusion, I always think this, um, a lot of people make work, right? Sometimes you might think to yourself, well, how is this work going to stand out? How is it going to be interesting? Or I think it's you, right? You are unique. You only have the experiences that you've had and you bring to your work what you bring to you. Um, no matter what kind of work you shoot, but you you are the special thing that is brought, right? Your vision and your talent. So um, yeah, I just, I mean, I'd love to just speak with you guys if you have any questions and um, 
would love to just chat a little bit. Hmm. Does anybody have anything for Tammy? Oh, my. Um, yeah. I knew you I... would, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> I, you are so creative. <laughs> you know, I, you? I, it is staggering. You you work on so many dimensions and you work so, um, you, you know, you dip into them and then you're, you're dipping into something else. And it's just a delight. Oh, um, thank you. And, and I... I guess questions, um, you know, I, you've shown so many segments of your work and um, like uh, the last work is, um, well, no, actually this kind of goes throughout. When you have a, a studio setting, yeah. you know, like from your room to wherever, um, and it begins with an idea, obviously, but how does that evolve and what kind of direction do you give? And when do you know you have it? And what? And then when you have something, do you characterize it? Do you know what you have? Do you say, this is a, a photo about um, shock or gore, gore or uh, I, you know, it, I don't, I don't know. It's just anyhow. <laughs> that's where I'm going to begin. So, <laughs> hey, yeah, I mean. I've always been extremely sensitive and emotional and um, kind of, I, I guess you would say perceptive, like I just pick up things with people and, and just small things. Um, so I think my point of knowing if something's working is if it, I feel that it's moving me, you know? Mm. If if I'm not feeling anything with it, then I'm like, oh, then I don't know. Is anybody else gonna feel it? But if I if I look at something and I'm like, okay, like it 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 expresses. I just think like I always say I want a piece of art. If it's hanging somewhere, I shouldn't have to stand by it and explain it. Uh, that doesn't mean that the person looking at it is gonna feel or think the exact same thing that I did when I made it but I want it to speak for itself, right? So if it's emoting something, if something is kind of dark and somebody hates it or somebody thinks it's funny, I want it to have a point of view, right? I, I want it to like touch somebody in, in some kind of way um, because- Do you begin with that point of view though? Do you say- Art is communication. Yeah, I always think, what do I want to communicate? Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, for me, it's expression. Um, I mean, I'm very much into the emotive nature of a photograph, but it's got to, I think, I don't know, for me, it has to say something. And then somebody else can interpret it however they want to, you know? Um. But yeah, I, I always start with a vision of, okay, it's going to be like this. I mean, these shoots are, there, there's so many things that go into them. Um, you know, I would go to flea markets for the props, um, sometimes auction houses, um, costume shops. Uh, I mean, down to the smallest details it's i mean renting animals animal handlers and then you have so many things going on and if you're doing multiple shoots in a day it's you know um <clears throat> but i want to make sure i answer your question so it's more specifically do you want to did i answer the question or not exactly well so yeah i think what you said is that you do have an intention you're trying mm -hmm. to achieve you know, uh, achieve something so why don't you pick two or three and say what were you trying to achieve there mm. just as far as the imagery well well your communication your your what were you trying what were you trying to communicate well okay with this one it's sort of this is the circle of life I mean my my baby was just born and um, my father was about to pass away, so 
there's something to me that's sort of hopeful about this. Um, he, you know, he knew that he was going to pass. I mean, I would stand between both rooms and my father was resting in one room. My baby was resting in another room just side by side. And um, so just to, to say that. Um, and in this one, how many um, frames did you take? Mm. This one, he's looking away. Did you did you take somewhere he's looking at your child? Did or directly at the camera or? Um. Yeah, but he was really sick at this point. He could barely walk into the room. I mean, I had to brace him to walk into the room, so we didn't have a lot of time. But he really said, "Do whatever you want. I trust you." Um, that was very special. This was also probably one of like, the hardest shoots I've done emotionally because I knew I had to get this right. I wouldn't have more opportunities. And how um, did you know to take his clothes off? Did you want to show his bone structure? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, I don't mean to hog all the questions, so I'll, okay. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll back away. No problem. I have a question. Hi, hi, Tammy. It's Grace Weston. Hey. Hey. I'm sorry I'm not on video. I have a cold. I don't want you to see oh, me. Oh, it's okay. My, my nose running or coughing. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's so wonderful to see this and to see you and hear you. I feel like I know you. We've only met once in person, but I know you from Facebook. And I, I guess um, uh, my question here is around... Um, the darkness and um, even a sense of danger in a lot of your imagery. Um, and yet on Facebook, I know you as very bright, colorful, um, <laughs> you know, your family life and you, you just seem so up and bright. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of feelings in the picture, in the pictures, but some of them are almost ghost-like. Um, so, how do you, I guess, you know, where does this come from in you? Is it is it kind of a balance? It does it, first of all, I guess, does it feel like that to you? Is does it seem dark and dangerous? It seems really natural to me. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, they say like comedians are also have a very like not depressive side, but like. You know, you would think, oh, they're just the happiest people, you know? Right. <laughs> so I think there are just so many layers to us. And um, I, yeah, I've always said, like, I've felt too much. Um, so this is like really a way that I guess I, I mean, that I could express some of that feeling that, you know, you don't have to use words, but you can. I mean, I think that's the beauty of photography, too, is that you can just express yourself visually, you know? Sure. Um, and I, but, I think it's real evident, The um, as you said, you feel connected to kind of this time period of... Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, and I, I just find that really interesting. I feel like that in my own work, too, about a very mm -hmm. different time period. But, yeah. but uh, it's um, it's so interesting how you've captured that look so beautifully mm -hmm. thank you yeah. yeah I mean I feel I've really always felt that I was just from another time and place uh -huh. and, um, even when I was really little like I, I mean I remember being a teenager and thinking oh because um, I love the renaissance and I was like oh I, I wish I could model and do like sort of for renaissance painters and you know I've always sort of had that longing for just another time and place so yeah. this is really really natural for me it's where I kind of went that's just uh yeah it doesn't feel like a huge uh I don't know it feels like home in a way even though mm -hmm. it's kind of dark but it's not all dark right. um, it makes sense and if I can I have one more question and that yeah. is um uh, being self-taught, how how did you develop your lighting? How did you learn to light? 
I'll tell you. Um, so like when I started all this, it was like, okay, I, I don't know the first thing about lighting. So, um, got drop lights, just drop lights. And I had my husband like move them around. I don't know what drop lights are. Uh, like Home Depot. Drop oh, light. okay. Like, drop light. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, nothing fancy at all. Very cheap in fact. But it's like, to me, it's not, I don't know. Um, it's like you can hear singers that are like technically perfect and you don't really feel when you hear the song. And then you can have a singer who's like voice is breaking and it's just maybe imperfect, but so heart wrenching. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I think <clears throat> technically I just had to experiment with it. And sometimes I would take a drop light and put um, like a paper over just, to, you know, and just like move it around and be like, okay, stop, 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 stop. Come here, come further, come whatever. And like, that's really, um, okay, let's get another one. Let's get it here and fill it, you know? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I'm sure you could do it in a more simple way. But that's kind of like, since I was experimenting, it was part of the thing that I could really fine tune all the little tweaks that I needed. So did you ever move into strobes or anything else? Or, I, or have you been consistent with the drop lights and just using whatever lighting is convenient? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I have used strobes, but... Um, it's not like my common go-to. It's just kind of, I think I use whatever I feel the mood calls for. And I use what I think would be the best fit. So if it if it would be, you know, bringing in strobes and perfect. I have used that. Um, I shot a, like a Native American woman and had her in her like formal attire and stuff. And I, um, I don't know, I wanted a little bit more clean light for that. <clears throat> so I did use for that, but I don't know. I, I kind of approach each shoot, like what I think would be beautiful and, and experimental, I guess, to just try until I like it. Well, it works. <laughs> Thanks. I think it just gives me a little bit of control, you know? um yeah hey tammy tom hey. jones here hi uh your creativity is inspiring um i i think it's one of the best artist talks i've ever seen oh wow and, and uh i really admire your work your your the courage of your uh originality and experimentation is really inspiring to me Wow. So I wanted to thank you for your, your wonderful presentation. Well, thank you. That does so much for my heart. And um, I, can't, I can't tell you how much that helps me to hear that. So thank you. You're most welcome. Wow. Okay. Anybody else have anything for Tammy? I have a question. <laughs> Go ahead. Again, sorry. Um, uh, just uh, do you, so the animal handlers piece that's really interesting to me. Um, and do you is that um, something because you live you live in LA, right? I do live in LA. Yeah. So does that make it a little easier to find animal, For sure. animal props? Yeah, animal I, handlers. I imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't, I, mean, I just, I don't think I can get a baboon here. <laughs> Wait, where are you? Where are you? In Portland. Maybe. I mean. Yeah. Oh, well, Portland. You can. Yeah. <laughs> you probably uh, could. Maybe. It's so, it, your choice of animals and um, what you've done, I just, it's just wonderful work and it's so inventive. Um, it harkens to the paintings, yet at the same time, it's so original and fabulous it's just you're really you know really doing something great oh thank you man you guys are giving me a boost today <laughs> thank you it means the world
the other there's one more thing I was going to say when you talked yeah. about having your um show where you had uh I guess it was in LA when you first had all the furniture and everything and your models came in and wandered around and you told them not to talk to anybody I mean to me that seems like ghosts I mean it yeah. just seems like they were like ghosts Completely. That that was the the feeling I wanted to sort That's of fabulous. create, right? That they could be in sort of a living painting, so to so to speak. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Just wanted to say uh, thank you, and it, it it's just like you open whole new worlds. Th mm. Thank you very very much. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Well, if that's it, we'll go ahead and wrap it up tonight. Um, if you get a chance to stop by next month, February 15th, uh, we've got Landry Major joining us. I'm sure s several of you are, you know Landry's work. Um, thank you all for coming tonight. Thank and... you all so much. I just want to I just want to say if any of you ever want to reach out, you know, my door's open and um, I think just building on the community of artists is so, so important. So I admire you all, you know, keep going, keep doing what you're doing. And um, just thank you so much for having me guys. Thanks for being here, Tammy. Yeah. Thank you, Tammy. Okay, guys. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye guys. <laughs>